We will we'll get things rolling here. I want to um, take advantage of our time together mm -hmm. um, with our very illustrious panelists. Um, my name is Joey Seltzer. I'm one of the senior associate deans in the admission office at Bates. This is the lovely Bates campus behind me, <laughs> disguising my unfinished basement. So um, I, I'm very close to campus, though, um, and it did look exactly like this this spring. Um, now the leaves are starting to change a little bit. There's some crisp, cool fall air coming in. It is prime time um, to be learning more about Bates. So thanks for joining us um, this evening or this morning, wherever we're finding you in the world. Um, I am really proud, excited uh, for our conversation. We're talking um, with two uh, Bates alumni about their experiences, both as a student and now navigating the world after Bates as um, a Bates College graduate. Um, I'm one of those people too, which is really fun. So I graduated from Bates in 2003, which means um, in 1999, I was moving into my first year dorm, probably studying in the library, falling asleep at this point <laughs> in my first year career. But that was well before you guys were born. So I want to um, save some time and some airspace for our more recent grads. Um, but I'm certainly happy to interject my own stories into the conversation as well. So um, without further ado, I'm going to ask our two panelists to introduce themselves. And then I'll talk a little bit about kind of the structure of our time together. Um, so Jackie, you're you're the older um, statesman, elder statesman in this pair. So would you please introduce yourself first? Oh, goodness. Well, I am wishing nothing more than to be in Maine right now. Um, but I am currently located in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Um, my name is Jacqueline Forney. Um, I am originally from Bloomington, Indiana. Um, and I went to Bates for undergrad, got my master's of public affairs at Brown University, and made my way to Tulsa uh, to work for the George Kaiser Family Foundation. Um, that's a little bit about me. I can't wait to talk a little bit more about my Bates experience and hear all the questions you all want to know about. Thanks for having me. So I'll go next. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Alexandria Anoa. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. And I currently live in Malden, Massachusetts, but I grew up in the Cambridge and Somerville area. And I am a recent grad of Bates College, class of 2020. Um, and I encountered, um, you know, the impacts of COVID. So we could also talk about that and how Bates supported us. And I think that's an important conversation. Hopefully we'll have time for it. Um, and currently I am a first year doctoral student at Suffolk University's um, uh, the Applied Developmental Psychology um, program. So I'll be studying um, you know, right wing ideologies and its impact on youth development and a, a lot of other things. It's my first year, so just getting started, but um, that's also another conversation we can have about, you know, how Bates supported um, in the transition to grad school. So that's a little bit about me and I was the activities queen at Bates. So I'm so happy to answer any questions about activities and clubs and different organizations. And I'm just happy to be speaking with you all today. Great, well, thank you both. Um, we are um, in luck tonight, folks. Uh, we have two great students students, former students, graduates um, to learn from and hear from. Um, so please take full advantage of our time together. So at the bottom of your screen, you can see the Q&A um, button. So feel free to take full use of that or make full use of that through our, our entire time together. Um, you could ask questions directly to either Jackie, Alex or myself, or um, if you have a more general question, um, anything and everything, we are here to, to serve you, knowing that this is an important time. You're at a juncture where all these little anecdotes and stories um, make a real difference in understanding the community that you want to join um, next year. So take full advantage of, of us tonight. Um, so I am curious. Um, knowing um, each of you a little bit as uh, as undergrads and, and kind of getting to watch from afar your trajectory during your time at Bates. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, kind of where you were as a senior in high school, what you thought you might want to do when you grew up and kind of where you are now and were there were there down the way that um, were really important to highlight in terms of how you got to where you are currently. Um, Alex, how about you. Definitely. So I went to Prospect Hill Academy Charter School, which is public charter in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And 
I didn't really know anything about Bates. I didn't know anything about Bates. Um, as a black woman, you know, I was looking for historically black colleges and universities. So Howard University, Spelman, beautiful college um, such as those. Um, but my college counselor was like, hey, have you tried, have you heard of NESCAC? And have you heard of, um, you know, Bates College and Bowdoin and all these other schools? And I was just like, no, I haven't. Because <laughs> it's in Maine. I mean, I don't really, you know, I don't know. <laughs> um, and I'm first gen. So my mother, you know, didn't really know too much about, you know, those schools. Um, and I decided to give it a shot. And that's just a part of my personality where I, I like to, you know, learn about different things. So um, as a senior, I was kind of flexible with where I would want to go. And I, I went to Bates and I visited. I did the fly-in program. And I also um, just visited a few times on my own with my mother. And I, it would kind of happen organically. Like it's typical, like I fell in love with the campus, but specifically the students. Um, I made sure that I, when I was visiting, and I think that's important for prospective students, I know that you can't do it right now, but if there's any opportunities where you can talk to the current students, I think that's the best way to get a grasp and the pulse of the campus. And that's something that I really did. And what I found was that Bates students are curious and they're just into so many different things. And I was just like, I wanna do that. I wanna be that. Um, so that's how I found Bates. Someone you know, brought it to my attention. Um, and I decided to you know, step outside of my comfort zone a little bit. And before I was thinking, you know, I wanna be Dr. Anoa, medical, medical doctor, I should say. <laughs> and I found it wasn't my, um, it wasn't my thing, you know. I took Chem 107, and it it was it went, it was there, and it went. Um, but I decided to my first semester just take you know different courses. I took a dance course, I took a psych psych course, I took chemistry, and I fell in love with psych psychology and dance. So I was a double major in psych and dance, and my journey uh, to my research journey, and now being a graduate student really had to do with the support of faculty there. Um, so I had Professor Amy Douglas, who is the chair of the psychology department currently. And um, she was just, she was just amazing and was always telling me like, hey, I know psycho psychology is a, it's a big field. So what are, what is something that you're interested in? And um, I was like, you know, I'm interested in race and discrimination and social behavior. And she kind of just took me in and, um, I also took initiative to just ask, you know, those questions. So I think for the most part, Bates professors really want students to ask them questions because they're excited about their work and they want you to see if their interests align with yours so that they can help you. And if not, they point you into the direction of where you should be going. And that's kind of how I found uh, my place at Bates, but also throughout, throughout, through the organizations I was in as well. And I guess we could talk about that later because I'm talking a lot. <laughs> I can jump right in. And I'm going to second a lot of what Alex said. But um, so my trajectory was a little bit different. I grew up in a small town in the middle of the Midwest. Um, and to be quite frank, I knew the only way I was getting out of my small town or the state in general uh, was through athletics. So I was a student athlete at Beats. I played volleyball all four years. Um, and I was looking at a lot of colleges through athletics because that was kind of my way to new opportunity. Um, and I had never heard of the NESCAC before. People in my town were like, are you going to a community college? They had never heard of it before. Um, and I was lucky enough to be able to go on a visit um, to Maine and I absolutely fell in love with the state. Um, I was like trees, mountains, <laughs> in Indiana, we only have cornfields. So it was so gorgeous. And then um, when I got to the Lewiston Auburn community, um, one of my first stops was at the Harvard Center for Community Partnerships. Um, and I kind of knew going into college that I was interested well, I did know I was interested in community engagement, um, but I wasn't sure like in terms of my major and what I wanted to do after college, how that would all relate. 
Um, but I knew whatever community I was going to, I wanted to get involved in that community. Um, so the Harvard Center for Community Partnerships was kind of my selling ticket on being able to go to Bates, get involved in the Lewis and Auburn community, while also being a student athlete, while also being able to do so many other things on campus. Um, and so through my four years, I likewise to Alex took many classes in many different departments. Um, I could have been a sociology major, I could have been a rhetoric major, I could have been an econ major, I was a politics major. Um, I felt like it kind of put me in the middle of all of those. Um, and then when it came to my senior year, um, which I'm sure we'll get to a few questions more about the next step, but um, I explored all different careers, all different industries. I spoke to so many uh, Bates alum. I also just spoke to a lot of friends and even like friends experiences of who they talked to. And it wasn't easy at all, but um, I did decide to go get my master's degree because I knew that I would wanna be in the public policy field. So ultimately I decided to go get my master's of uh, public affairs at Brown. Um, but that's a little bit about my career tra trajectory through Bates. Thank you both. I am curious, um, and Jackie, you just hit on it a little bit. Um, the, one of the appeals, I think, for a lot of prospective students, certainly was for me, of a school like Bates and liberal arts is the freedom, the ability to take full advantage of the curriculum, to wander around, take your time before you declare a major. Um, but you're right, when you get to the end, when you get to senior year, it's like, oh, <laughs> I have to start making some choices and narrow things down. And that can be really overwhelming for folks that um, maybe are still interested in six different things. So can you talk a little bit about maybe that developmental process of getting to a point of figuring out what you care about and how you want to translate this breadth of knowledge, this wonderful skill set into something a bit more specific after graduation? What was that like for you, Jackie? Yeah, so I always find this question a little difficult because I think it really depends on you and where you are, um, especially going into your senior year, because some people you'll be around. I remember having friends who knew exactly what they wanted to do um, and were set on doing that. I was not like that. I was someone who was like, I have no clue what I want to do. I know I've liked taking these courses. I know I've liked doing this. And so um, I made it a goal just to reach out to a lot of people. Um, and that that was always a selling point for me, the people who I, I talked to, because if I had a connection with a person where I was like, wow, they, are do they have amazing career, they're doing meaningful work, I really enjoy them, that was something for me that would always really stick. Um, so I'd go to the, the Bates Career Development Office and see if they could help connect me um, to folks in the public policy um, kind of world. Um, and they would connect me to folks in the public sector and also in the nonprofit sector. I also was able to shadow someone in the private sector at a consulting firm. Um, so I really just tried to use all the resources available to me at Bates. And Alex kind of hit on it a little bit earlier too. Your faculty are amazing um, because not only can they help you in the classroom, but they're also really great like mentee or mentors for the mentee in terms of helping you navigate that space. So I certainly went to a lot of my professor's office hours to ask them, you know, I'm really thinking about going into the public policy space. Do you have any advice as to like how you get started, how I would figure out if this is where I want to be? And a lot of them will say you kind of have to just jump in and see if it's right for you. And that's exactly what I did. Um, but yes, I think it's totally normal to feel very uncertain about what that kind of next step is. And I think it's okay to feel that way. You just have to kind of be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Um, but yeah, that, that's what I would have to say to that. <laughs> and, and Alex, um, you don't just jump into a doctoral program. <laughs> you kind of have to um, commit. Um, so your process might have been slightly different. Can you talk a little bit about that decision and how you knew that kind of this route, this PhD route was what you wanted to do? Yeah, definitely. And to echo what Jacqueline said, like you're also, your major doesn't 
stop you from being interested in other things. Like you could be a rhetoric major and a theater major, but still really want to be in public policy. Like you can do a lot of things. It's about also your experience. Um, so don't think that, you know, you're just, this is it, it's one and done. No, you can like also be like a dance major, but also I actually really like policy or I like um, sociology. Like a lot of things that base the courses are designed to kind of overlap like the ideas. And um, that's a great, that's an, a great component about base as well. But for me, freshman year, I did not even, I don't even think I knew what a PhD was to be quite honest. I was like, <laughs> uh, I knew there was a doctor and I knew there was a, the MD, that's what I wanted. But I realized that wasn't my calling. And it wasn't until um, I did some research um, over the summer through the uh, Center for Purposeful Work, which was previously known as the Career Development Center. So I did a lot of research in the summer um, and I got funding from Purposeful Work to do research at Harvard and just to connect with different professionals in the field. And I, it just solidified what I was also doing in my coursework you know, in class, um, for example, like research methods or, um, you know, statistics, you know, I was doing a lot of the work, I was doing a lot of the work that I was doing in the summer, but also ha being around an environment that's not Bates, but you're using your Bates education to kind of apply everything, just confirmed and solidified why research was for me and also the the thesis and i think we'll get into that maybe a little a bit later um but the thesis my thesis experience i was able to find a topic that i'm passionate about and that is you know a personal reflection of who i hope to be in the world and using my research as activism and i was like this is this is something that i can see myself doing so it was you know my Bates education it was doing research in the summer it was talking and connecting with different people, different professors, um, not just psychology professors, but professors in the history department. Like, what, what is it like getting a PhD? Or um, is it worth it? Like, that's a real question. It's five years of your life. Like, is it even worth it? Like, what can you do with it? Um, so kind of to what Jacqueline said, like at Bates, there's so much resources to talk and connect with people, professionals. Um, our alumni network is amazing. Um, and we have funding for to do those internships and to do job shadow programs to give you that experience and to and to also may, and also say maybe I didn't like this experience and that's also very valuable as well. That's valuable information to know that you don't like something and that's okay. So graduate school, I just not I didn't just wobble into it. It like took a lot. It would took freshman, sophomore, junior, in my senior year to develop those research experiences and to see if I can see myself um, doing that work. Um, but initially I had no idea that I would be in this place. Um, awesome, thank you. Um, so we do have a question um, that has come in and everyone else feel free to um, keep adding your, your questions into the Q&A function at the bottom. Um, but Harrison asks, um, for you both to comment on um, the paths that your friends have taken. Who, in your in your little circle of Bates friends, um, where where are they? What are they doing? Um, it, share some stories. Maybe Jackie, do you want to go first? Harrison, thank you for this question. Mostly because I get to think about my friends, which just puts a smile to my face. Um, but um, my most immediate friends, I would say. Um, so one is pursuing her dreams in theater in New York City right now, and uh, she's absolutely loved it. She's a theater major at Bates, loved the theater department. I became very close with her friends in the theater department, so by association, I loved the theater department at Bates. Um, one of my other good friends works at um, MGH and um, hospital in Boston, and as you can imagine right now, um, speaking with her it's very different given covid she works in the icu there um, so things are very intense but she works as a researcher um, at mgh and then another one of my good friends um, he actually went on a fulbright 
Um, and he returned, he, he actually had to return early due to COVID. Um, but those are my most immediate friends. All of us took very different paths. And as both Alex and I just spoke to, all of us were kind of on the same journey of figuring out during our senior year, kind of what that next step would be. And the great thing about Bates is you have that community around you. You can have those conversations with friends. You can have those conversations with classmates, obviously faculty, staff, all of those folks. Um, but you have a really great supportive system around you to help you figure that out. I remember when my friend found out he got the Fulbright, we were all in comments and like, we're all screaming and really excited for him. And that's like a very distinct memory I have um, because the Fulbright pro process is a whole year. Um, so I felt like we were applying for the Fulbright. Um, but yeah, so, so those are just a few examples. <laughs> Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. So I have a so I have a a lot of friends that are doing different things. And if in COVID, if we can, you know, be honest, COVID, especially for the class of 2020, um, it's the job market looks a little different. Um and I however I think that Bates still made sure that students were placed in in, in um areas that they are still passionate about. For example, so one of my friends um, she is doing TFA right now, and she is a science teacher um, teaching, I believe, uh, high school students. Um, and she's really interested in um, education and also public policy. So before she gets her master's, this is something that she really wanted to do to actually engage, engage with the community that she would be serving on a higher um, like level or magnitude. And then I have another friend who is doing communications for UPS um, and she's really into marketing and she's really um, into, you know, how do you create brand and brand development. And then there are friends that um, uh, got Fulbright, but because of COVID, you know, things are a little different. Um, and I'm trying to think who else. I think those are some of some, some examples, but um, I do want to emphasize that the Center for Purposeful Work really um, creates so many different opportunities based on your interests. And if you utilize the Center for Purposeful Work early on in your Bates career, you can have so you can have diverse experiences so that you can make an informed decision by your senior year. Like this is the field I want to go into. And so the, the Fulbright program, um, in case uh, folks are unfamiliar, because I certainly wasn't before I came to Bates, um, is um, a fellowship run by the State Department. It's typically a year-long teaching um, program in a different country. Um, so it's part of our diplomacy, um, our, our policies towards diplomacy, which is super cool. So primarily, it's something that students do after their undergraduate degree. Um, and Bates has been particularly fortunate in the last probably eight years. Um, we are a top uh, producer of Fulbrights, if not the top producer of um, Fulbrights in the country, which is super cool for a small school. I actually um, got to be part of a couple interviews for Fulbrights today for our current seniors, which is just coincidence and awesome. Um, I'll speak a little bit about friends um, from a different perspective. So um, 15 plus years after graduation, you might want to know what people still do. Um, so um, in my close group of friends, um, I have a friend who was a rhetoric major at Bates. Um, she is a um, head coach of a women's basketball program at a college in Virginia, um, which is kind of perfect that she was a coach and she was majored in rhetoric. Um, I had a friend, um, one of my best friends was um, a psychology major. She pursued her PhD, which Alex I'm happy to put you in touch with it. I have been meaning to send this email to you, by the way. Um, but she pursued her PhD in psychology and is a practicing um, clinical and research psychologist in particularly child psychology. Um, she just moved back to Maine, which is super exciting for me. Um, another friend who was a neuroscience major is an occupational therapist working primarily with children. And then um, our most successful friend in the group um, was an American Cultural Studies major at Bates. And she is um, the um, 
Chief People Officer for HubSpot in Boston, which is perennially one of the best places to work in the country and in large part because of her, which is super cool. <laughs> so Katie Burke is her name. If you want to Google her, she's a Bates grad and doing awesome things in tech as a female leader. So um, it's funny to see like how friends scatter over time. And I think probably if we talk to each other six months after graduation, we'd be like, what are you doing? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm doing this PhD thing. We'll figure it out. So um, it's it's kind of fun to see how that's solidified over time and people um, kind of being more comfortable with, with their chosen paths. And all of them are very different and we're all still super close, which is hopefully good news for you guys too. Um, so let's see, um, we have another question. Um, so do you have a sense whether going to Bates has limited to the geographical locations um, and steps in your career. Um, so um, in particular, um, has this, is there, is there kind of a regional focus for what folks' next steps are? Um, in particular, um, the student is asking about LA, Chicago, Atlanta, we might say London, Beijing, the world. Um, is Bates location and maybe our small size, is that a limiting factor in terms of where people go after graduation? What do you think? I can go ahead and jump in. <laughs> um, I would say that I would not consider it limiting whatsoever, especially because, I mean, I'm also taking into perspective that given I grew up in the Midwest and even now being in a state like Oklahoma, a lot of people aren't really familiar with NESCAC schools, um, but it's a great educational opportunity. I find it to be. Um, but that being said, employers are very aware of Bates um, and the Bates Alumni Network really extends everywhere globally. Um, so you can always find a Bates grad somewhere, wherever you are. Um, I would say though, a lot of my close friends are certainly, whether they're on the West Coast or the East Coast, I don't really have too many that are in the Midwest. I would say it's at least like a 10 hour drive to go see one of my Bates friends. Um, but in terms of like employer prospects, I, I think a Bates degree is as employable as any other degree. So if not more. Yes, I agree. And I, I also wasn't just applying to grad school because you never know how things go. I could have got denied from all of them, but <laughs> luckily I didn't. But um, I also applied to different like research positions, but also like places at like different banks and different businesses and different um, like different corporations and like marketing. And I got, and I got interviews from in different places that weren't, you know, the greater Boston area or New York city. So to kind of, to say what Jacqueline was saying is that um, you may think that Bates is small, but we are small, but we are very mighty. And there's a lot of people, um, employers that, you know, know about Bates and Bates is getting more exposure, um, you know, every day. And I think, our alumni do a great job of making sure that um, they say, you know, I'm a Bates student and, you know, Bates has really helped me get to X, Y, and Z. So I don't think Bates is a limitation at all. In fact, I, anytime I say, at any time anyone will ask me like, where did you, where'd you go for undergrad? Um, they're like, oh my goodness, like, wow. <laughs> so, and my mom too, my mom love my, and my mom's, so I'm first gen, so my mom will always, when she's at work and people say, oh, your daughter goes to Bates? And you wouldn't think people know, but um, Bates, is, Bates is up there to be, to be very transparent if that's something that people are, you know, asking or, you know, interested in. It is, it is a prestigious institution and the education is very rigorous, um, which will bring you to that next level and kind of make you stand out among your competitors. Harrison, thanks for that question. I just put a, um, a link in the chat or the Q&A to our postgraduate outcomes for the class of 2019. Um, and 
when we um, have the next conversation, I will dig and find, I know it exists somewhere and I will find it, um, the map uh, and percentages of where our alumni live. Um, and that can give you a broader picture of where our alumni are in the world. Um, but I appreciate that question for sure. Um, so we've talked a lot about kind of trajectory and career development and um, all of your impressive um, experiences and where you are. Um, can you add a bit more about the fun? I know you're both super involved in in life at Bates outside of the academic life um, and expect, expectations in the classroom. So talk a little bit about kind of what rounded out your Bates experience. What were those meaningful things that helped you enjoy your time at Bates um, and be a full, whole, and complete and happy person? So Alex, do you want to go first? Yes. Like I said, I was activities queen. <laughs> so um, there's over like a hundred organizations at Bates, believe it or not. Um, and I used to be a tour guide and anytime I would say this, people were like, really? This is such a small institution. But that just speaks to, you know, the need, like students want to be involved. So some of the things that I was involved in was, um, I was involved in, you know, the, the dance department. Um, and I was also a part of, um, you know, Black Student Union, Africana, Caribbean Student Association, um, and Women of Color. And, you know, these are racial affinity groups. and you know, we would host like different events and programming through the Office of Intercultural Education, also known as the OIE. And they would just be great events that kind of foster that fellowship in that community. And it wasn't just, you know, students of color, there was um, white students coming to those um, events too. And it really kind of creates that community um, that, we, that, we, that we want to have at Bates. And also outside of Bates, there's a ton of small businesses um uh i'm trying to remember like that one that one breakfast place that we always talk about forage yes <laughs> but like small businesses like forage and then there's mother indian there's also different um artists around like being a dance major and also having friends in the theater department there would be um, local artists around you know doing doing excellent research in regards to theater and dance um, and then also the Howard Center. When you are involved with the Howard Center, you have the privilege of knowing beyond Bates, like beyond the, beyond the um, campus. And the youth of color that are in the Lewiston and Auburn community are super talented and they have so much connections to different businesses and different events and programming that are going around. So um, if you really wanna be a holistic student, um, you know, join organizations, you know, go to class, of course, but, um, you know, make sure you have time. You're not just, you know, you're a human, you're not just, you know, a robot and you're a student, but there's so much to offer um, outside of, outside of Bates as well. Um, so I had fun. <laughs> I agree. I feel like my life now is so unfun compared to when I was at Bates. Um, but yeah, I would say like, honestly, when I look back on my, my time at Bates, it was all so fun. And like, even though class is class, I had fun in class. Like when I, I like fostered a true love for learning at Bates because growing up in my public education system, I was certainly taught to just read by the book and not have critical thinking skills and things. So I genuinely loved learning at Bates. Um, so I found that fun. But outside of that, I would say, yeah, there were so many things always going on around campus. I often dropped into many of those events just to say hello or to meet new people. Um, again, that was one of my favorite things. Bates is such a welcoming community. You can come into an event and you're certainly not ostracized at, like when you walk in people are like hello what's your name like welcome um, which I really appreciated from the beginning um, and then kind of to Alex's point being able to go out into the Lewiston Auburn community and form relationships there was very important to me um, and a, a commitment of Bates as well is so that it's not a bubble um, between the college and the town. Um, so they are very intentional about making sure students do try to form very organic relationships with community members. Um, so I was able to work at several schools in the community. I also worked a lot at the Center for Wisdom's Women um, and some work with the Maine Women's Fund. So 
there were many opportunities to get out in the community. And it was also a nice balance between being on the Bates campus, but understanding that there are public issues going on outside of the Bates campus. Um, so it was always a refresher for me to step off campus for a few hours and just remind myself, hey, there's a world outside of college too. So um, yeah, I had so much fun at Bates and I miss it so, so much. <laughs> Great, thank you. I did find it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for giving me time. Um, so Harris and I um, and others who are interested in the Q&A answers, um, I put the um, link to the alumni survey that happened in 2015. I'm guessing we're due for another one pretty soon here. Um, but on page five, there is a map of where alumni are in the world. I knew I had seen that. Thank you. Yay. Um, so um, Jackie, I'm, I'm curious. Um, we talked a little bit before um, before everyone came into the conversation, kind of about work culture, and certainly we're in a very um, unique moment in terms of work culture. But I am curious, um, as you've entered the working world as a as a real grown up now, um, how how you tie any of um, kind of your relationships with your colleagues or how you navigate your work, how, how does that tie to your experience as a Bates student, both maybe in the classroom or beyond? Yeah, um, obviously I think everyone on this call, no matter if you're a prospective student or you're Joey or me or Alex, we're all navigating new terrain. So every day is a little bit different. Um, I'm very thankful that my employer is very flexible and, willing to openly state, hey, if today is not your day and you, you don't wanna get on Zoom or you know you need to take a, an emotional day for yourself or whatever it may be, a mental health day, there's that possibility. And I've certainly appreciated that. Um, I know all of the employees there have, but in terms of my experience at Bates and how that's translated um, into my working culture, I think Bates instills in you that that culture is okay and to embrace it because i think prior jacqueline growing up in a culture of you know you got to go to school you got to get these things done and of course you want to get those things done but sometimes it's okay to stop and say hey today is not my day i need some space for myself um and the bates community was something that really taught me hey you need to step back and reflect on this and you know the state of emergency or, sorry, not emergency, urgency, sometimes leads to really horrible ramifications, especially on communities of color when we make decisions that are super quick instead of stepping back for two seconds and making sure that others are making decisions, you're not making decisions on others' behalf. Um, so this time in our world has certainly been a listening and learning point for me, and that was certainly cultivated at Bates, but has now translated actively into um, my job, which I really appreciate. Thanks for sharing that. Um, Alex, I'm curious, you mentioned earlier that you did want to talk about um, kind of last spring and your senior year and um, things being um, unexpected. And, and also, I want to acknowledge that you were an important leader in the student body last year as well. So can you talk a little bit about um, what that was like to experience at Bates um, in your senior year. Um, how did how did things go last spring? Yeah, um, last spring was uh, I could, like kind of get emotional when talking about it, especially as a student of color and first generation student. But um, it was it was unexpected. Um, like the day we, you know, received an email from President um, Spencer Clayton that you know we had to pack our things. Um, I think Bates was just waiting. I, I don't think Bates wanted to let us go <laughs> right then and there. We were we were waiting, and it was. I'm gonna be real. For it, I'm gonna be really honest. Like it was a little frustrating to figure, like to see is administration gonna say something, like what it is. But we all now understand that COVID is COVID is so complex, and we didn't really know that much information about it. Um, but that day when we had to leave. You know, and I said this in my commencement speech, like I saw people's faces like literally drop and it, 
I've never seen so many paid students like cry. <laughs> and it was, it was, it was emotional, but, but that support, even after, like we all went back home, we were all still making Zoom calls. We still were doing thesis bindings. We were still having that, that community. Um, and you know, graduate, when we had our graduation, you know, we're all texting each other and I'm seeing things on like the Facebook, you know, uh, chat and things like that. So it was, it was, it was disappointing, but we bounced back and, you know, we can't wait to come back to campus to say our proper goodbyes. But as a class, um, you know, it was, it was difficult to, to leave, you know, it was our senior year. We missed out on gala, which is a year, which is like an annual kind of event where you get to dress up and there's like a chocolate fountain, there's dancing, there's music, there's great food, and you get to like really look nice and faculty, wait, faculty doesn't show up. They say that the faculty shows up, but I never see faculty there, <laughs> but it's just like a really great event. So we got to miss, up, miss out on that and other different events. Um, so it was hard and, you know, we went back home and we did, we did remote learning like, you know, the rest of the student body. Um, but I will say that Bates did an excellent job making sure that students um, got home safely and things were paid for. I had other friends from other institutions that were struggling to get back home and get their stuff. Bates was not one of those institutions. They put their students first and I already knew that Bates was for students, but that definitely confirmed that, especially as a student of color. You know, I've had my own struggles, but that that solidified that Bates really cares about students. So although there was a lot going on, um, Bates got on top of it when it came to remote learning and making sure students were safe. And I think that's the most important thing. Thank you, Alex. I know that um, that's a lot to, to share. Um, I appreciate you being candid and honest. Um, and again, I'm missing out on a hug. Like there, <laughs> we need, you need to come back and we need yeah. to hug. <laughs> I miss you. Um, so thinking about like taking a deep breath, um, enjoying um, the beautiful state of Maine, we're gonna transition um, a bit to um, getting outside and playing um, maybe easier said than done um, in a lot of places in the world right now, but but actually in Maine, that's been our respite, I think, especially in these last six months. Um, so maybe Jackie and Alex, um, when you were Bates students, did you get out and about? Did you hike and bike and camp and ski and all the, all the stuff that we put in the brochures? So I have to say that I was, it was kind of my goal of, since I grew up in Indiana, I had never done any of those activities. So I was kind of nervous. I was like, how do I venture out and do those things? Um, but you'll know that a lot of Bates students choose Bates to do those things. So I had many, many friends who were like, Jacqueline, come with us this weekend. So there were weekends that I went to Acadia National Park, which is absolutely gorgeous. It is my favorite place on this planet. Um, and there were other weekends that we would just go on hikes kind of around the Lewiston Auburn area. They would be like maybe a 20 minute drive to go on a, uh, on a hike. Um, and then I will share one funny story and hand it off to Alex, but my very first, and I won't say last, but my only time I've gone skiing <laughs> was in Maine over winter break. And my friends were like, Jacqueline, we need to take you skiing. And it was one of my other friends first time too. And I will have to say, I hit the ground so many times. I was so nervous that I was going to hurt myself. I maybe even cried a little bit, um, which like at that point, I was like, okay, Javelin, you're tough. You can do this. But when you get going down those hills and you don't know how to stop, like I'd see the little kids with their pizza cutters out stopping and there is no stopping for me. Um, so that was my one time skiing, but there are many, many avid skiers at Bates. <laughs> yes, um, at Bates, even if you don't like the outdoors, you're gonna have to do it. Someone's gonna pull you, someone's gonna send you an email after email after email to do skiing, 
to do snowboarding. Um, so yes, I, I wouldn't say that I was super active outdoors. Um, I, I mean, when I was younger and I grew up in the church, we would do camp, camp trips and with like, um, you know, the, with uh, the um, church people. However, I've never been skiing. So I base was the first time I went skiing and it was because of the wonderful outdoor club. They are consistent. So the outdoor club is the largest club we have because everybody gets the emails and everybody's a part of it. And it's super easy to get equipment. Um, they want students to experience Maine. And that's one thing that I really like about that club um, is that there's just so many different um, like materials that you can get from them to help you make your trip easy. If you can host a trip yourself and just rent out, um, you know, gear from them. And I went to Lost Valley. So Lost Valley, um, I don't know, I, I don't know exactly how far it is from our campus. I think it's, it's like 10 minutes, right? It was super short. Yeah, the, the bus ride was super short. Um, but Lost Valley has, um, you know, ski slopes, you can go snow tubing, snowboarding, anything. Um, and, it, and there's a, like inside, there's like a bar and there's like a stage where people and local artists can, you know, um, perform. And it's just a really great vibe and it really brings our community together. And again, it's 10 minutes away. Um, and there, we do have transportation. So a lot of clubs will host um, events at Lost Valley and we will, um, you know, have transportation to go to Lost Valley. So there's a lot of things to do and it's, in like the Bates DNA that, you know, you kind of just, you kind of just go. Even if you don't feel like it, you got to go. You're going to get emails after emails until you go. <laughs> Good job, you two. Um, I will say um, I live about two miles from campus and a lot of, a lot of our typical social activities are restricted um, right now for obvious reasons, but I have seen a lot of Bates students running, walking, biking, roller skiing past my house. Um, so that's been kind of a fun, I typically see a fair amount anyway, but it's been turned up a notch this year. So I think our students are enjoying getting out and about in, in maybe new ways this fall than they had before. Um, I know we're getting close to the end of our time um, and I wanna give Jacqueline and, and Alex a chance to maybe add another story or anecdote or, um, you know, relive a, a tale from the glory days um, with our prospective students. So um, maybe Alex, um, I'll, I'll give Jackie a little bit more time to build up to it because I know she's been dying to talk about Bates um, and you're fresher. So um, can, you, can you share a story or maybe something you want folks to know about Bates before we leave? Yes, definitely. I mean, I have a lot of stories, but I can't think of, like my brain is fried. Before this, I was doing like some work. So I'm just going to give like some motivational speaking since that's something I'm good at. Um, I would say um, reflecting on my senior year and my junior year as a high school student, you know, making sure, you know, you're giving each school a chance um, and not just saying that something, if I, I wouldn't have graduated from Bates if I didn't give it a chance, you know, I, if I didn't dig a little deeper and explore Bates a little bit more. Um, and because I was kind of guarded off, I was like, you know, I mean, I was flexible, but to some degree, I said, I don't know if I want to go to Maine, you know, I don't know if I want to do that. So go visit, I mean, or in this case, ask questions, go to events like these for every institution, because as much as um, you know, we would love to have you, you want to make sure that you are like a great fit for the institution. And also, um, you know, if you come to Bates, you are part of, you will forever be a Bobcat and you're always part of like this larger family. Like once you graduate, like they're not going to stop communication with you. You're, it's not even about emails. Like you will get personal emails from your professors saying, how are you doing? Like I got a text today from one of my advisors, like, how's everything going? And I think that's just a little anecdote, but it speaks to the power of Bates after we are, we are small and that kind of makes relationships so much easier and your network so much strong. So if that's something that you're interested in and community, but also creating a professional network, I think Bates is a great institution and also the education um, is, is rigorous, but it's manageable. And I was able to challenge myself in ways that I don't think I would be, I, I, I couldn't, I wasn't imagining that I could do that. Um, and 
yeah that's a little bit more and i can you know give my um information like in the chat or you know, um you can give it to them but i would say you know just give every school a chance and write down the things that you want and if that school is what you want if that if that aligns with what you want then you know there's your answer i too echo alex a little bit in that yeah, it's super important to take time and really reflect on each school you're looking at. But, and this was something that was really difficult for me was when it was coming down to those last few schools, because I did end up applying to Bates early decision. Um, but really sitting down and thinking, what's best for me? What environment am I going to be challenged in? But I'm also going to feel comfortable around the people who will let me be vulnerable and kind of find my way. And um, for me, that took sitting down and, and really thinking about those things. And it's difficult because, you know, sometimes there's the lure of certain things at certain schools, um, but I could not be happier with my decision to go to Bates. And, and I'll be honest, at the time, I was a little uncertain about it. I was like, I'm moving across the country. I know no one. This is a very new experience. Um, but one thing I wish I would have known is to have a little bit of patience with myself. Um, I remember the first semester, even the first year, um, you know, I was feeling so uneasy because I wasn't quite sure what classes I really enjoyed. I wasn't quite sure about my friend group. And that was something that was really important to me was finding really close friendships, people I could trust. And that just takes time, right? And naive Jacqueline didn't really understand that that took time um so so just have patience with yourself um because all of that will come um and then i have to end on i can't talk about baits without talking about commons and the food at commons <laughs> because every night when i make my dinner which i'm not a good cook i'm like i wish i was at commons um so Take it, take advantage of commons. Um, there's so many good options there and options. Like I grew up in a household with three other siblings and I was lucky if I got the last thing on the table. Um, so just having the options at commons, I absolutely loved the vegan bar. Um, you know, the cereal wall was amazing. You got really great pizza options. Um, there are so many good options in commons. And so if you want a good place for some, amazing food go to Bates. <laughs> and one thing I want to add too is like Bates what I and I didn't notice this until my senior year but every week there was always a guest speaker or somebody that is an expert in some field that was given a talk and it what sometimes it wasn't a hundred people there but it was just 10 people there but the information that you get um I remember that I um I forgot, I forgot his name, but he is like a well-known chef, but it was only like, I think 20 of us in the Office of Intercultural Education. And he was talking about, you know, the different places he's, he's gone to when he was giving advice to students that want to start, you know, businesses and like food businesses. And I didn't realize that. I was like, wait, I see so many flyers. It's just like, there's so much stuff to do at Bates that is fun, but it's also educational too. And you can apply it like in your classes too. And I think a lot of faculty are in like they're also in tune with the events that are going on so it makes like your relationships and the conversations just more fruitful and yeah there i've just met so many different guest guest speakers and um artists and chefs <laughs> and people that work in policy and law so that's another thing to keep in mind is that Bates doesn't stop like <laughs> there's always things to do and stuff to learn Great. Thank you both. Um, and I, th I think, Alex, you put it um, perfectly in the way I like to talk about Bates, too, as someone who um, whose parents didn't go to college and didn't have an understanding of like an alma mater or that college culture that um, kind of comes from having parents who've experienced it. I didn't get the fact that it wasn't just four years until I graduated. And then I was like, oh, it keeps going. <laughs> and here I am still working at Bates. But I think that's um, that's the really exciting thing is that um, the, it is four great years, but it is also the rest of your life that you can be tied to um, all these experiences and connections that can enrich your life 50, 60 years after graduation. So 
Well, I, um, I'm so excited to connect with the two of you again this evening. Um, it's so great to see your faces and hear your voices and know that you're well. Um, Alex, please um, send me an email and I can put you in touch with my friend Julia, um, who's yeah. the PhD. Yeah. Oh, awesome. And Jackie, I'd love to just chat with you again too. Um, and um, students, feel free um, to be in touch with, um, with me and I can facilitate conversations with um, Jacqueline or, or Alex or others. Um, my email address is jseltzer at bates.edu or you can just just look on the Bates staff page and mission staff page and I'm there and I can help facilitate more conversations. Um, but I wanna thank you so much for your time and your energy um, and wish you all well and sending you a big virtual hug from Bates. Um, thank you both and thanks all for joining. Have a great night. <laughs>